Welcome to the finale of our series. This is part eight. And normally, for those that are brand new, you wouldn't know this, but normally each summer, uh, we try to take the majority of the summer and we do a longer series than normal. So I promise you, most of our series are not two months long, uh, but we try to take some time together to really read a text closely, really go line by line, verse by verse. It's a big deal to us. And I hope you've gotten some, something out of these messages in this series. So for the last time, turn with me to Ephesians chapter chapter 6, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. And I'm going to read 10 verses in total. Why? Because you can handle it. You, you could have been another place on July 24th, but you're here in God's house and you made the right choice, by the way. And so glad that you're here. And I'm going to read all these verses and then God's going to do a great work in us as we finish strong. Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10. Here's what it says. Finally, be strong in the Lord. And in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this finale. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. He's got schemes and tricks to try to trip us up and cause us to sin and turn away from God. Verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, and with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Then take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and pray, verse 18, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert. Somebody shout, be alert. Be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me. The person writing this is inspired by the Holy Spirit. His name is Paul. And he's saying, hey, pr pray for me. Don't forget, don't forget your boy. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. And he's not being uh, figurative here. He's being literal. He's in chains in prison because of the gospel. Pray that I also may declare it fearlessly as I should. If you're taking notes, I'm calling this last message, part eight, the finale, battle ready. Battle, I'm, I'm gonna get you ready, okay? Battle ready. Some of you are in a battle right now. Spoiler alert, if you're not in a battle right now, there's a battle coming. So I'm gonna get you ready. Your pastor wants you ready. We're gonna be battle ready. Would you bow your heads with me? Close your eyes. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for our summer that we've spent in Ephesians chapter six. God, we know we took a one week pause last week to, to celebrate and remind ourselves of our heart and our duties and our callings, God, to serve other people just like you, Jesus, came not to be served, but to serve. But God, we've taken this summer and we've not only read Ephesians six, we've invited your word to read us. And God, we need this applied to our life. I know again, there's those that are going, uh, facing spiritual battles in their health and spiritual battles with their kids or grandkids, spiritual battles when it comes to their finances or their home or, or maybe something they're struggling with mentally, God, maybe even sin, just an addiction that just keeps pulling and won't let go. There's spiritual battles that so many of your people are facing. And so God, we know that Ephesians 6, this series and, and even this message today, it's a right now message, a right now series. So I pray God for every single one of us that we would look for different areas to apply this to our everyday lives. And I pray God that as we spent this time getting every single ounce we can out of this text, that we'd all be better because of it. We know that your word has power, your word has authority. And like we talked about two weeks, it's a weapon that we can use. We give you glory and we give you honor as we learn how practically, this is the most practical message of the whole series. God, as we learn practically, how to put on the armor every single day. We give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and let the church say amen. I can tell y'all fired up today. I love that. Anytime y'all get me or y'all fired up, it gets me extra. 
fired up. You know, um, I'm reminded, especially this, this past week, I'm reminded that as a, as a family of five, so that's our family, we got five, and a lot of you have five in your family too, just something about that, I don't know. Uh, but I was reminded this past week that when you got a family of five, especially young kids, uh, it can be a real battle getting everybody ready in under 30 minutes and out of the house with everybody still loving each other. It can be a battle. Now, even if you don't have young kids, even if your kids are old enough to have kids of their own, I still think you can relate on some level, right? Now, husbands, don't raise your hand about your wife because she's the one that it can be a little challenging, which by the way, we always pick on the ladies how long it takes to get ready. Some of you guys spend more time looking in the mirror, fixing your beard and making sure you're edged up to perfection than your wife, just saying. <laughs> But, but it can be a battle. <laughs> Somebody said amen, amen. Uh, it can be a battle trying to get, get, get ready. And obviously there's, there's other things that are a lot more complicated, a lot more challenging in parenting. But, but I was thinking about getting ready, of course, thinking about this message this past week. And so our three little ones, we've got a nine-year-old, we've got a four-year-old and a two-year-old. And, and we, we work to get them together, uh, ready and together. And and there's always like a missing shoe involved that you got to go on a search and rescue mission. And, and those that got young kids, you know, you, you got like 18 bags that you got to pack before you go. It's like you're moving, even though you're just going to the store. And, and you got to make sure you don't forget the diapers and the creams and the toys and, and, and more toys just in case there's a meltdown again like there was yesterday. And not only that, but you got to pack the emergency clothes because there was that one time that you forgot to pack the emergency clothes. They really needed the emergency clothes. And you had to use something that wasn't clothes to cover up. You know, I'm speaking for a friend, you know, but like there's just those moments that you, God, so you got to pack all this stuff, and 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 it's just like it, it, it's it's a challenge getting ready and getting everybody out the house, and and one of the things that that really surprised me as a parent, and maybe it didn't surprise you, but it surprised me is is how challenging getting your kids, your young kids, ready for bed would be. That's a getting ready. I'd love to outsource <laughs> to somebody else, but it, but it is a especially around two years old. I don't know if you got a two year old or if you remember having a two year old or you got a friend that's got a two year old in their house. One of our kids, like I just said, is two years old, and it just amazes me how shocking it is to our two year old every single time bedtime rolls around that it's time for bed. It's like, this does not happen once a week or once a month or once a year. This is every night, baby. Like, what's going on? And it's a total shock and it's a surprise. And there's this whole routine and, and it feels, I'm, I'm just, this, this is free therapy, okay? Just give me a moment. But, but it's just like, it's just like I, I, getting ready for bed, a child getting ready for bed, it's, it feels less like getting ready for bed and more like a hostage negotiation, you know, it's, it's like, hey, if you go to bed right now, I'll give you an extra special treat tomorrow, you know? I know that's bad parenting, but it is what it is. You know, like, it, like okay, you can get one more sip of water, but, but it's just one book instead of two, you know? Or it's no book at all. It's just go to bed and pray to God, you know, like that kind of deal. And, and it, can be, it can be really challenging getting ready. Now, now, getting your kids ready is one thing, but how many of y'all know, just, just in life in general, getting ready is very important. I'll say it to you this way. Uh, when you got a job interview coming up, don't, don't you think, would you agree with me that getting ready for that job interview is very important, right? Uh, if it's not important to you, maybe it should become <laughs> important to you. Like getting ready uh, for a, uh, a review at, at the office and and whether you got a 360 review, which those can get pretty crazy <laughs> pretty quick, or, or whether you're just sitting down and you have an opportunity to get a, get a raise beyond what the typical raise you would maybe get in any given work year, you know, that calendar, like, like you need to be ready for that. Uh, we, we got some students um, in this service, like you, you got to get ready for that test. You, you should get ready for the SATs or the, the ACT, right? Like you, sh you should get ready. Getting ready is a big part of life physically, but definitely spiritually. There's things in your life spiritually as you're on a journey with Jesus, just like I am, that you need to be ready for, that God wants to prepare you for now so you'll be ready for the battle that's coming right around the bend. Somebody shout, I need to get ready. Like, like you gotta get ready for some battles that are coming your way. How many of y'all know there's going to be some battles in this life? There's a reason that when you get saved, you don't automatically teleport to heaven. 
Like that would be awesome, right? And we're gonna be in heaven one day and there's no battles like that going on. It's worshiping Jesus, incredible. Uh, it's gonna be amazing for eternity. But here on planet earth, there's still some struggles and some things that we're gonna come up against and we gotta be ready for them. And so that's why we've taken two months to go through verse by verse every single piece of armor, spending an entire message on it so that we would be ready for the battles ahead. But here's the problem. A lot of times in church circles, when we get to verse 17, where we were two weeks ago in part seven, a lot of times when we study this passage, we stop at verse 17. And we think we're done because Paul has stopped using different physical pieces of armor to describe spiritual things. We think he's done, but friend, study it in the original language, read all the commentaries. He does not stop his intent of preparing us for battle, being led by the Holy Spirit at verse 17. You got to keep going through verse 20. I'll say it to you this way. Number one, prayer is our secret weapon. It's not included in the six lists of armor, the different pieces, but it absolutely should be included. It is the seventh secret weapon. You know how different places got their, 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 uh, their special sauce, their secret sauce, you know? You, you, you got, oh, I love Cain's secret sauce, you know? And, oh, Jesus, just had a moment, you know? Like, like the secret sauce is, is incredible. Well, se the secret sauce of like your journey with Jesus, the secret is prayer. And this is one of those messages where we're just going to lock in on prayer because it's so critical and there's far too many Christians that never pray. And so we want to be a praying church. Jesus even said, my church will be called a house of prayer. That's what he said. So all my prayer warriors in our church, and we got a lot of you, you're praying constantly for you, your family, our world, our government, you're praying for me. You should amen me the loudest during this message because the more people we can get praying, the more we're gonna see God do here on earth, earth like it is in heaven. And so we've got to know that prayer is the secret seventh piece of armor. It is a secret weapon for us to use, not just one day a week, but every day of the week. And as we read, the Bible says what? That we, in verses 18 through 20, that we are to pray in the spirit on all occasions. So not just sometimes, not just when life is, you know, going to hell in a handbasket, which I don't even know what that saying means, but you know, whatever that means, like, like not just when everything's falling apart, and not just, you know, because you won the lottery and you're like, whoa, which people joke all the time. This isn't in my notes, but like, hey, if I won the lottery and I tithed on it, would you receive it? The answer is yes. Yes. I'm not saying play the lottery. I'm saying if you won, then we would receive the tithe. Anyways, <laughs> you can be mad, but that's just the truth. <laughs> So pray in the spirit on all occasions. So all the time and in all different ways. So you should mix it up. You should do it. Like if it's stale, try something different. Try something new. And to be clear, here in chapter six, all the commentaries I read this last week were unanimous. And they're not always unanimous. But all of them were unanimous that as you study it in the original language, when Paul being led by the Holy Spirit writes down, pray in the spirit, he is talking about being led by the spirit of God in prayer. And so God is helping you set the agenda. God is leading the charge as you pray. You are aligning your heart with God's heart, your words with God's words. And I'm gonna break it down. Again, the most practical message of this entire series. I'm gonna break this down practically here in just a moment of what this looks like for me. But in general, we all have to get back to a more biblical concept of prayer. Because way too often, and I think this is a big reason why people don't pray more, but way too often we view prayer differently than it was ever intended by God. And so I gotta get us back to a proper mindset. For example, if we're not careful, and I say we on purpose, because I can do this too, but if we're not careful, our prayers can sound more like a wish list, a bucket list, or a honey-do list. Let's just be honest about it. If we're not careful, we can fall into that mindset. And that's the world's mindset, by the way, not how God intended it. 
It's like, God, give me this. God, make this happen. God, I'd really like it if you do this for me one day. God, make sure you don't forget about that and take care of that. Now, don't get me wrong. God cares about what we care, care about. And not only that, God wants you to ask for those things. Like, like, don't get me wrong. And really, this is sound theology. God cares way more than we care even. Like, like wrap your mind around that. Like he cares even more. So I'm not saying that. Don't, don't go down the wrong path. Here's what I am saying. So often prayer just becomes a transaction instead of communication. I, I didn't think you, you got it good enough. So I'm gonna say it again. Prayer cannot just be a transaction. It's gotta actually be communication. That you, you talk with God. You, you walk with God. Think about it like this. This will really help some of you just that are struggling and maybe even feel guilty about not praying enough. Prayer should be less like a, a spiritual vending machine. Like, like you put a quarter in. Actually, it doesn't even make any sense. Scratch that. You put $5 in and get a Coke, you know, or a Dr. Pepper or whatever. Like, like it's, it's not supposed to be that way. That if I do this, if I pray this or say this, then God will do something for me. That, that's, that's not biblical prayer. That's the world's ways. That's not how God intended it. The, the better analogy is think of prayer like spiritual walkie-talkies. And I was thinking about this recently because our kids, are, they just got walkie-talkies. Like, think about it that way. That, that with a walkie-talkie, you know this, that you push down the button to talk, but how many of y'all know you gotta let go of the button to hear what's on the other line? We're teaching our kids that. Like, you can't just hold it down. They're, they're, two of our kids were just holding down their button the entire time. Try, like, it don't work like that. So it's communication. Are y'all with me? It's communication. It's not just a transaction. It, God is not some genie in a bottle, and you got to rub it the right way, okay? Like, some of y'all don't even know that was a Christine Aguilera <laughs> reference. Uh, I just aged myself a little bit. But anyways... And so it's not a transaction, it's communication. It's talking and walking with God. That throughout your day, and this is what it looks like for me, that you're talking, but you're also taking time to listen. That you're sharing your heart, but you're also asking God to share his heart. And you know in your heart that his heart supersedes your heart. That's what prayer should look like. And again, I just want to make it real practical, and I think this is going to bring a lot of you freedom, those of you that don't pray at all or feel guilty about not praying enough. Now, in my life, especially once we have kids, it's just not realistic. And a lot of you are in this scenario, even if you don't have kids, because we're all so busy. But in my life currently in this season, I don't necessarily even as a pastor, and I, I, this is my job, I do this for a living, but I don't even necessarily have time to spend hours upon hours every single day in prayer. And so I had to make an adjustment because I used to do that before I had kids. But I had to make an adjustment during this season and it will change in another season where I got back to where, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna spend some dedicated time praying every single day. I'm gonna spend some dedicated time. It's for me, it's in the morning before I even get out of bed, uh, reading God's word. But I'm also gonna make sure that I do checkups with God throughout the day. And this is what's gonna set some of you free because this is the biblical view of prayer that constantly throughout your day, you would be in communication with God. That it's not like, oh, I got this. Think about it even logically. You know, say you, you can do five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it is. All right, God, have my prayer time in my prayer closet. I'll, 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 I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. <laughs> and then you got 24 hours. Like, how many of y'all know that that's not good communication in a marriage? Definitely not gonna be good communication in your relationship with your savior. And so I'm trying to make it easy. I'm trying to take the weight off of it that it's just throughout your day you're checking up with God, that you pray over your meal. Like that, that, that's a really good thing to do. You eat at your desk in front of people at the office, pray. I'm not saying you shout it. I'm saying you do it quietly and you do it in a way that is honoring and nothing crazy or weird, but you make it a part of the habits of your life that I'm checking up with God. I am taking time to talk with him and hear from him, that in good times and bad times, I'm praying, whether it's big or small, I'm praying, I'm thanking God. And also this, when something stresses me out, when someone cuts me off on Highway 6, speaking for a friend again, but when that happens, that I pray in that moment, God, I don't want this, but I pray your blessing over their life, that you would help me to forgive them, right? Like that kind of a deal. Like a part of your day 
It should be a reflex, like a holy habit reflex, that something good, bad, big, or small, or anywhere in the middle, that you are praying with God, often out loud, but if you're in a group, you can pray in your heart and mind to make that a part of your life. It's not a transaction. It's all about communication. I'm checking in with Jesus throughout my day. Think about it like this. It's like spiritual breathing. You, you breathe all the time, right? R right? Right? Like, <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, prayer is like spiritual breathing. Like you don't have to think about breathing unless you, you've uh, you know, like struggled with asthma like I have, you know, like, like yeah, you think about it then. But, but you don't think about it, it, it it's a habit, it's a rhythm of your life. Think about prayer that way, that you're just constantly connecting with God. You're sensitive to his voice. You're listening that even if it's a whisper, you can hear him. Why? Because you are so close to him. It's spiritual breathing, speaking out and then breathing in what God has to say. And not only that, and I always give a disclaimer here for what I'm about to say because we got people from all different denominations, no church background at all, and I love that about our church. But I do wanna give you a disclaimer here that for me personally, and this is very biblical, if you look at the book of Acts, and I'll tell you what I'm talking about in a second, if you look all throughout the book of Acts, which is right after the Gospels, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you can write down these references if you like. And then also 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14, the Bible talks about, and even by the way, the apostle Paul who's writing this, he says that he does this, but the Bible talks about praying in your prayer language, speaking in tongues. Now, some of you are already looking for the exits, okay? So I, I, I get that, but, but here's the disclaimer, okay? It is extremely biblical, if you follow the Bible, you should be about the gifts of the Spirit because it's all throughout the Bible. And so we made a decision, um, and even before we got here four and a half years ago, but my wife and I made a decision even before we were married that if the Bible says it, we believe it, and that settles it. And, and, and we stole that from Smith Wigglesworth, an incredible man of God who passed away a long time ago. But we settled that in our hearts. And so if you look at, again, at Acts, 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14, and even the Apostle Paul who wrote most of the New Testament, he says this, I speak in tongues more than anybody. And so I'm not trying to make it weird, not trying to scare anybody or shock anybody, but I am unashamed that I follow the Bible. And, and, and if you don't like that, that that's, that's between you and God. But I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. And so often in my life, because it's in the Bible, I, and God has given me that gift, and there's a lot of people in this service, and there'll be a lot of people next service that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and you speak in other tongues. That is definitely a way that you can pray. And I do that often. Now, I'm not saying if you've been given that gift that you need to shout it out in Walmart, okay? There's enough weird people in Walmart already, all right? It's like, put on some shoes. Why are you not wearing shoes, you know? The grocery store, like, come on. But like, I'm not saying do anything weird. I'm not saying uh, do anything that would freak other people out. 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14 are very clear on the gifts, not just speaking in tongues, but they should do it in a way that's order, uh, in order, not in chaos, a way that is spirit-led and not man-made. Are y'all still with me? Like, I thought y'all were with me at the beginning, but I feel like I'm losing you here. But this is all Bible. And so you, one of the ways you can be led by the Spirit is to pray in the Spirit. And so almost every single worship set, I'm not shouting out in tongues, but there, just me and God, I got my eyes closed. I don't even really know what's happened up here and I'm praying in the spirit. I'm not making a scene. I'm not trying to freak anybody out who's unchurched or anything like that, but it is a powerful tool that you can use to pray the perfect will of God. And if you believe what I'm saying, can you shout amen? Anybody with me? Okay, a few of you. Like this is something that you can do. And so prayer is our secret weapon. And honestly, it's a very big reason of why the church is growing. It's a huge reason. It's not my preaching. It's not the worship, even though the worship is, is phenomenal. It's not the programming or the strategies or any of that. The reason why this, this, this church is growing and we're reaching young people and families, and the reason why that's happening is because we decided that we're going to pray first. Prayer is not our, our, our last resort, it's our first priority. That's why we have set seasons of 21 days of prayer. And there's one coming up, by the way. We're trying to give you practical handles. Y'all can show this, oh, it's already there, awesome. Y'all are incredible, thank you, Peter. 21 days of prayer. And so it starts here, not this 
coming Monday, not tomorrow, but the next Monday. And so I just want to challenge you as your pastor, whether you, you've come before and been a part of it in person or, or online, or whether you're brand new, doesn't really matter to me. I'm challenging every single one of you to make this a part of your life. God's calling on you is to be a man or woman of prayer. And it's a lot easier than you think. And so we're trying to help you in that. And I'm so excited about our Monday morning starting on August 1st. We'll have three of them, of course, during those 21 days. And, and if you're like me, you're going to be here in person. But there's also people that are like my wife and you got young kids or you go to the office before the sun gets up. And so there's no way you could be here in person. Well, guess what? We make it available online for you. Like, even if you got to sneak away and pretend like you're, you know, you're taking a phone call, you know, and that way you can spend some time praying with us. It doesn't have to be the whole hour, but I'm so excited about it because not only do we have live worship at those and, and hot coffee, thank you, Jesus, and thank you, cafe team as well. <laughs> you can't pray at 6 a.m. without coffee anyways. And so we'll have that. This year, we're adding things. We're going to have different stations. We're going to have a station uh, here in person where you can take communion during that hour, if you'd like to, we're gonna have another station similar to what we had for Christmas Eve. It was so beautiful where you can pray and light a candle, remembering that God is light. And we're gonna have a station for that. There's other things that we're working on. I can't tell you just yet, but we're trying to make it easier for you to engage in prayer, not a transaction. It's called to be communication between you and God. Not only that, but I just wanna make sure you're aware of this. I wanna pastor you well, that at the end of every service, so not just during 21 days of prayer, every single week, including today, after each service, 9.30, this one, and also 11, we have incredible prayer teams, altar teams, that they come down to the front and they would love to pray with you. And, and I just wanna make it real clear that if you come for prayer, it is not a sign of weakness, it is actually a sign of strength. And I try to model this for you because I ask for prayer all the time and, and I, I need it. Some of you tell me, Pastor, I'm praying for you. What have I told you? Pray for me more. Like it is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. And just so you know, I wanna make it as simple as we wanna have a culture of prayer because that's what Jesus has called us to do. And so these prayer teams, they've been trained. They ain't gonna do anything weird that they've been trained to keep things confidential if you're concerned about that. They love Jesus. They love this church. They love God's people. That's who they are. Not only that, but they are prayed up, ready to pray down heaven on earth and your life and to believe God for miracles. So I'm just telling you that when we gather together and we pray, it is something you need desperately. And so whether something's good in your life that you're praying for or a struggle that's going on, make sure every single week you come down here and you don't even have to know their name, but they will pray for you and they will ask God to move in your life. Jesus even talks about this. Matthew 18 verses 19 through 20. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for it will be done for them by my father in heaven for where two or three gather in my name there i am with them that's happening at the front after every single service you need this i need this all right here's the second and last point of the day and the last point of the series and again it's going to be so practical you can tell already number two is this prayer puts the armor in place prayer puts the armor in place and so not only is prayer the secret sauce of the growth and everything that's happening here not only is prayer a secret weapon that it should be included in the armor of god but prayer is actually practically how you put on the whole armor of god every single day and so for you to not pray would be for you to not put on the armor of God. And I know you want to put it on. That's, that's why you're here. And so God has given us this gift of prayer for communication, but also to get battle ready. As every single day we put on the full armor of God. It's how we get battle ready spiritually. So here's what I want to do. I want everybody to grab your worship guide in person. Everybody grab it. It was either in your seat or a seat next to you. On the inside of that worship guide, 
behind the connection card is this armor of God prayer card. When you grab it, would you hold it so I can see that you got it? I wanna make sure, okay, awesome, awesome. If you, if you didn't get one, if you ran out on your row, we have extras in the back on this black table. Now, these are not available online, but if we have any left, we'll make them available for our, our Monday morning prayer. So we put this together. Again, cookies from the top shelf, like I said last week, <laughs> to the bottom shelf, to make it as simple as possible, because I know you're busy. But this is so important. So here's my challenge to you, okay? I'm so excited about this. I've been waiting all series long. That's like two months. That's a long, y'all know I ain't patient. That's a long time to wait. But I had to wait. I've been waiting all series long to give you this. Because I just dream of a church that is battle ready. And that we are ready to face the battles that are going on. That we, we, we can't see it in the natural, but it's happening in the spiritual realms. A church that's praying, prayed up, ready to go. A church that loves God and loves his people. I, this is what I dream of, friend. So I want you to hold it in your hand. And you can see here that we've mapped it out of how every single day you can pray on, not put on, you can pray on the armor of God. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm challenging you, whether you're an elder, staff member, I'm gonna do this myself, my family, whether you're, you're brand new today, or whether you're a longtime member, maybe you've been here longer than I've been here because the church has been around for a while. But I'm challenging every single one of you for the next seven days to pray on the armor of God. And, and today's the first day, so we're already gonna get off to a good start. But I'm gonna ask you to pray this out loud. So you do it in your car before you go into the office or you do it in bed before you get out of bed or you do it at night, whatever rhythm matches for you. But I'm challenging you. I double dog dare you with a cherry on top, okay? <laughs> I know not everybody will do it, but I'm hoping and praying that most of you will. And it will make a difference. Now, and we're gonna read it out loud in a second. A couple of things. This is not a magical list we put together, okay? That's, that's not how prayer works. It's not if you say it the right way and don't skip a word on accident, you know. It's not if you use a British accent, you know, then it will come true. It's, it's not what it is. Remember, prayer is not a wish list. It's not a bucket list. It's not a honeydew list. It's communication with God, not a transaction. So that's not the heart behind. The heart behind this is, hey, we believe what God says in his word, and we believe in prayer. And as we put our faith in him, and as we ask God to do what he's already said he will do, it's gonna happen. Do you understand the difference? It's not a magical prayer. It's a faith prayer that I believe in God's word and what he has to say. And so we're gonna, we're gonna walk through this together. We're gonna say it out loud. And we did this probably a few months ago with the Lord's prayer, which is better called the disciples prayer. And it's just powerful. It's that rhema word. Y'all remember that two weeks ago, if you were here, the spoken word of God, there's power in God's word, speaking it out loud. So Peter in the back, you're doing a great job. Show that first line, keep that up. And Peter, here's what I wanna do. We'll do it next service too, is we're, we're, not, we're not getting married. So this is not a repeat after me deal, okay? You're gonna follow my flow and follow my cadence. It's the same thing online or in the room. If you didn't get a card, it will be on the screen. But Peter, don't get too much in front of me, but also you gotta, get, you gotta show the next one like a millisecond ahead. You got me? So that way they've got something to read. But if you got the card, that would be the easiest thing. And we're gonna speak out the word of God because prayer puts the armor on. Amen, church, y'all with me? Okay, so we're gonna do this today and then I'm gonna challenge you to do it for seven days. All right, follow my cadence, here we go. Lord, today and every day, I put on the full armor of God. In Jesus' name, may the belt of truth be tightened around me. I believe in you and what your word says. Help me to wear the breastplate of righteousness by living a life worthy of your death. I put on the shoes of peace by asking for your peace that passes all understanding and also your power to be a peacemaker in every situation. I take up the shield of faith because I have confidence and assurance in Jesus Christ. 
may you place your helmet of salvation on me and help me take captive any thought that sets itself against you and make it obedient to your name. I will use the sword of the spirit by speaking out the word of God over every difficulty until it changes. Amen and amen. Yeah, you can give God glory. This is what we've studied for the last two months. What a tragedy it would be if you learned a lot of stuff, but you never put it into practice. So seven days, you already got day one knocked out. I'm gonna challenge you. I'm gonna do this too. And remember, you gotta say it out loud. Out loud, the rhema, spoken word of God, and watch how things change. And here's what happens. You're gonna do it for seven days. And then after the seven days are done, I want you to keep this. You can keep going if you want, but you don't have to. And I want you to put it in your Bible. If you're like me and you like to have that physical copy of God's word, you find Ephesians 6, and this is your bookmarker there. And you refer to it as needed. If you don't have a physical Bible or you wanna put it in a journal or put it in a drawer where you won't forget it, you do that, but you store it away. So that way when you feel like a battle's coming or you find yourself in the middle of another battle, you can make sure you're battle ready, amen? Amen, would you bow your heads with me, close your eyes. God, thank you for how, we're, uh, how practical your word is. It's not complicated. Thank you, God, that prayer is not a transaction. It was always meant to be communication, like that spiritual walkie-talkie, that we would talk with you and walk with you, but also listen, that we would check up with you throughout the day. It didn't have to be hours upon hours. Most of us can't do that realistically. But even in the middle of the season, the busy season that we're in, we can communicate with you throughout the day. That's really what praying without ceasing means, that we would be in communication with you all throughout our day, good times, bad times, and everywhere in the middle, big things, small things, or medium things, that we would just talk with you and and walk with you. And so I pray, God, that we would never forget that prayer is the secret seventh weapon. It's a tool that we can use. I pray, God, that, that for the next seven days, you would help us as a church to to use prayer to put on the full armor of God every single day. That we pray it out loud, rhema, the spoken word of God. That as we do that, again, nothing magical, but as we do that and align our heart with your heart, as we make declarations to you, as we come into agreement with what your word has already said, that's when things change. God, you know my heart, I've dreamed of a church that would be battle ready, that wouldn't cower in fear when the enemy attacks, but would actually attack back, that would stand firm as your word says. And God, that's what you called us to do. You said, Jesus, that that your house will be called a house of prayer. And I pray for more and more people, more and more men and women, young and old, that they would pray consistently that they be in constant communication with you. I I pray for those right now, I feel this in my heart. I pray for those right now, they feel guilty because of their lack of prayer. I pray that guilt and shame would go in Jesus's name and they realize today they have a fresh start with you. And that it's not about hours upon hours, it's it's two minutes every day, it's five minutes. You gotta start somewhere. And then it's just constant communication, praying over meals. praying anytime that something's happening in our heart, good or bad, God, just that constant communication. Help your people, us, to develop that holy habit, not because we have to, but because we get to, to be able to hear your voice. God, we realize this, this is for somebody. We realize this, you, you don't work for us, we work for you. And we, and we want your will to be done in our lives. And so we pray what we care about absolutely because you care way more than us, but we also pray, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I pray lastly for anybody underneath the sound of my voice that's far from you, I pray today would be their day of salvation. I pray today they would humble themselves before you, a mighty loving God, that they would confess and believe that Jesus, you are the one true God, that you are who you say you are and you have the power to save them from their sin. 
Right now, you can do that. Every head bowed, every eye closed, especially in this room. If you've never given your life to Jesus, talk about where you start. This is where you begin. It's not the finish line of faith. It's the starting line. And this is your moment right now. God, I, I, I wanna give you my life. And so if that's you, you've never done that, or, or maybe a, you feel like you're a prodigal son or daughter and you've just really turned your back on God and walked away, you can have a fresh start as well. It's so right where you're at. You can follow what the word, the Bible says in another place. It's Romans chapter 10, verse nine. It says this, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, he's God, and believe in your heart that he rose from the dead. He died on the cross and he rose from the dead. You will be saved. That's what the word says, Romans 10, verse nine. That if you confess and you believe and you can do that right now, you can whisper to the Lord. Not a big scene, not, not getting people to look at you, just you and the Lord right now. You can whisper to him, Jesus, I confess that you are God. And Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross, it really happened. And you also rose from the dead three days later. And so I ask you, Jesus, to save me, to forgive me of all my sin, to make me new, to rescue me. God, to do a, a new work, a fresh work in me, that from this day forward, I would follow you and live for you. And then anytime I fall down, you'd help me to get back up. God, thank you for those that are confessing and putting their belief and faith in you. Thank you, God, for those that are doing it for the very first time and also for those that are just doing a fresh start. We give you glory and we give you honor. And we know this, we know it. It says in your word that when one person gets saved, all of heaven throws a party and celebrates and rejoices because what was once lost is now found. Thank you, God, for what you've done today. And we ask all this and pray all this in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you sensed God's presence. If you made a decision for Jesus Christ, or if your life has been impacted in any way, please send us an email at info at ChristCub.net. We would love to hear your story. And for those that committed your life to Christ, we want to help you on your new journey by sending our free Start Bible Kit in the mail. If you'd like to partner with us financially, simply click on the Give tab at ChristCub.net. There it will take you to a safe and secure page where you can set up a one-time or recurring gift to help us accomplish our vision, heaven full and hell empty. And as always, you can find out more about Christ Covenant on our website or on Facebook or Instagram at Christ Cove Houston.